When it comes to building sites in WordPress, my preferred way to do it is using Generate Press and Generate Blocks because they give me tons of advantages in terms of speed, client editability, performance, all the features I need are there, but there was one small lacking feature when it comes to menus in Generate Press. However, now in Generate Blocks version 2.2, which is currently in alpha, we have a full bespoke header builder. And this is so exciting for me because the standard Generate Press menus are super boring, they're functional, they work, but it leaves a lot to be desired. And now more so than just styling, we can do some really, really cool stuff. As you can see here in this article, we do have a video from Kyle from the admin bar who has two really great videos at this time in terms of how to use them and a crash course video that came out just a day or two. So I'll link his channel in the description. But what I wanna do is walk you through a sample site that I have set up here in WordPress, which will actually be a live site in the future. And this is based on a simple HTML and CSS setup that I created. And I teach how to build this in my community. So if you wanna learn more about that, check out my community linked in the description below as well. Now, the thing is what I wanted to do in this particular case is I wanted this request info to be a custom CTA button. Of course, I could just add an extra menu item at the end and just style it with CSS, which is typically what I would do. But now we have the ability to not only style individual elements and add custom properties around our navigation, but we can also do things dynamically too. And that's what I'm most excited about with this update is we can use something like block visibility to customize how our headers display in terms of things like where the visitor comes from or any property we need, like whether they're logged in, logged out, check the value of an ACF field, for example, and so on. There's so much we can do. So what I wanna quickly do is show you how I would set that up on this particular site and why I think it's so cool. So right now, this is using the stock Generate Press navigation system that comes just as part of the theme. And like I said, it's fine. It has drop downs, it has some color effects and stuff like that. But outside of these, there's basically nothing else that you can control here. In fact, this little underline styling effect, that's custom CSS on this site. So what I'm gonna do is quickly show you how we can start using the new navigation block inside of Generate Blocks 2.2, and then also show you how we can do really cool things dynamically. So before we get started, let's take a look at the plugin on this site. So you can see I have Generate Blocks Pro version 2.2 alpha, and of course things might change, we might run into bugs. In fact, I already found a bug. So you don't wanna use this on a live site, but I'm just experimenting with what I can do. We also wanna add a plugin called Block Visibility. This plugin is what's going to give us all of the super awesome dynamic controls that I mentioned earlier on, and is why I'm so excited about this update personally. So what we need to do to actually create our menu using the Generate Block setup is we're gonna to go to Appearance and Elements, and then we wanna create a new block type element. We'll just call this Site Header. We're going to drop into the content area and what we need to do is drop in a site header. Now there's this blue icon here. If I go back up, you can see that this is the generate blocks block called site header. So this kind of acts as the wrapper and it will give us the ability to set this tag as a header, which is what we would want. And then additionally inside of that, we can also drop in our navigation block. Now, of course there is a core one that has this little black icon. We want this blue one, which is generate blocks. So we'll drop this in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open my sidebar here so you can make sure to follow along and see everything I'm doing. So of course, this already looks honestly better than it does right now. Let's just go ahead and set this to location to entire site. And this element is going to be the type of site header. So when we publish this, and then we go back to the front end of our site, there is our new header. Obviously it has no styling really. It isn't even restricted to the width of our site, but that's super easy. I could just drop this in a container and then I could just add my contained class here. I can save this and refresh and there we go. Now it's pushed inside of our content container because of my global style. So you can see the level of control we already have. We can do anything we want at this point. The dropdown definitely looks a little bit better and these are just the defaults that it comes with. So we have this navigation, we can go to the sub menu and there is the item background, which is black. In this case, we'd probably wanna change it to like our tan color and then our item text is probably gonna be dark. Then our hover might be like a green like we can see right there. And then our active color maybe would be like a dark, something like that, just kind of messing around with this. So in a matter of seconds, we already have our dropdown style looking nice, which would take a combination of some of the old Generate Press customizer color properties and potentially even some CSS, depending on what you want it to do. Now, the point of this is I wanted to show you that we can add anything we want inside of this site header. So what we could do is a couple different things. Like if we wanted to take this menu container and we wanted to set 
set its sizing width to something like fit content. We could go ahead and then push this into the center with just some margin left and right auto, if I could tab there properly. So we can save this, and now we have a centered navigation. This would then allow us to stick our logo here, anything we want. We have full control over this header now, which is really, really cool. So at this point, what I wanna do is the coolest thing, which is I'm going to add a button after that menu. So we're gonna go just with the generate blocks button. Let's go ahead and drop in our button main class and we'll clear out the local block styles. And then we're gonna call this one something like request info. Now I also have a button uh, alt class here, which is a stacked class just to turn it to orange. And then if we save this, refresh, we can see that it's right where it looks like it's going to be in the editor. So what I wanna do is take this button and push it over here to the end after that uh, menu container here. So all I need to do is on my navigation, I'm gonna to go to layout, display flex. And then from this, we're just basically going to go to alignment. And then before the menu, I'm gonna go ahead and stick in a generate blocks image element. I typically like to wrap these in containers for flexibility. We'll set this to our site logo here. And that of course is way too big. So we'll just drop this down to like a medium size, maybe a width of 150 pixels. Okie dokie, so we're definitely getting somewhere. Navigation, let's go back to that and in our alignment, we're gonna set that to center here as well. So if we save this, now we have a fully functional custom header that's centered and we can push this navigation to either side. So like for example, we went ahead and set this to a margin left and right to auto. If we just go ahead and take off the margin left, you can see the navigation is now pushed all the way to the left side. So this gives you a lot of flexibility to move items around in whatever way you want. However, we still aren't at the thing that I think is the coolest here. And that is the ability to manipulate any one of these pieces dynamically. So let's say for example, this site has a logged in component, which it very well might for some of the association members. And instead of request info, when this user is logged in, we would wanna just show something like view dashboard. So what we could do is duplicate this button we can just change this text to dashboard. Then the request info, we're gonna come down here to visibility. This is the block visibility plugin we added earlier. That's where this is coming from. We're gonna to go to user role. And then under that, we're gonna say logged out. Then for the dashboard, we're gonna go back to visibility. We're gonna say user role, and we're gonna say logged in. So we can save this. And what we're gonna see here on the front end is only the dashboard button now. So of course, there that is. Perfect, that's exactly what we expected. And then if we open this in an incognito window, you can see it changes to request info. So that's one tiny, tiny example. Block visibility is something I use on almost every single site. You can even change things to be based on dates and times. So for example, if you had a limited time sale, you could have a button that says, get the coupon or purchase the sale or whatever that hides after a certain day. Now this is of course in alpha and this is very early, so I'm not super, super familiar with this yet, but the thing that I think is so cool is we can add these visibility options to the whole navigation function itself. So like, let's say for example, you want an entirely different navigation in a certain scenario. Like for example, if somebody comes from a URL parameter, perhaps you wanna hide the whole navigation, which in this case is going to be basically everything we set up here. That's gonna be the container with the logo, that's gonna be the menu and these buttons. So what we could do is just duplicate this navigation. Let's say for example, we want it to be a URL parameter. And so in that case, we're not gonna have either of these two buttons. And let's even suppose, for example, you have a different menu on your site. You could show an entirely different menu to people that come from a Facebook ad or like an email campaign, something like that. And then of course, you can stack these together. So here in this generate press element, you can see I have these display rules. So we can set this entire custom header element to be excluded or included on any site. So as we start to compile all of these things together, these display rules, block visibility, these custom controls to manipulate basically any part of the menu. It gets incredibly powerful as you can see. So let's finish my thought here. So let's go ahead and rename this to like, I don't know, maybe like email campaign navigation. And then we'll just say, you know, site-wide navigation. So what we're gonna do is on this navigation element, we're gonna scroll down to visibility and we're gonna say query string and we'll just say like UTM source equals email for example. Then we need to do the inverse to the other menu. Let's go here, visibility, we're gonna say query string, and then this time we're gonna say required queries is not UTM source equals email. So we can save this, 
Go take a look on the front end and the same menu exists, which is of course exactly what we want. If we add that query string of UTM source equals email, then we can see that the navigation changes here. It looks similar, but just to demonstrate the effect, if I were to drop out this logo entirely, we could save this and refresh. And now you can see that it's two totally different menus. So this is so exciting for me because of the fact that we can now stack in visibility conditions to any individual part of our menu, which before would of course require PHP, CSS, potentially JavaScript, all kinds of custom code that now can be just done right here in the block editor. There's so much more to cover here, and I'm going to continue playing with this and building more examples. There's mobile menus, slide-ins, all kinds of options, sticky, up, down. It's just, it's crazy. Everything you'd want in a custom menu builder is here. Like I mentioned, if you want to learn more about my course in the community, that link is down in the description. You can also check out Kyle's video for a more detailed example of how to build a totally custom menu. He's got a great example, so be sure to check that out. I'm really excited about this, as you can probably tell. A lot more stuff to come, so if you're not subscribed, please do so, and I'll see you in the next video.